from the College by the Lake, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Local, regional, national, and international guests discussing the issues and topics affecting the way you live are on Forum, the North Idaho College Public Forum, with your host and moderator, political scientist, Tony Stewart. I am pleased to welcome you to today's program, and our subject is going to be the theory or philosophy of sports. We want to give special emphasis to basketball in this discussion, and that is because of who our guest is today. We're very pleased to welcome to our program uh, to North Idaho College, uh, the new men's basketball coach, Hugh Watson. Our guest uh, has a baccalaureate degree from Lee College in Cleveland, Tennessee, and he holds a master's degree from Tennessee Tech. He has coached at both the high school level and the college level, and when he was coach at Lee College, his team won the national uh, basketball championship for the NAIA. Uh, Hugh, we, as a southerner myself, we welcome you to the, to the Northwest, and we know that it's not totally new to you because you were the assistant, excuse me, the associate head coach at the University of Idaho for three years and then went back to Tennessee and returned, and we look forward to uh, your time here and particularly your discussion of sports on our program today. Thank you, Tony. We're excited about being in North Idaho and back into the state of Idaho. Uh, my whole family, is, as a matter of fact, our son is a, a freshman at North Idaho College this year and going, planning on playing basketball. So we're very much excited about being back uh, after our three years of, of lease back into Tennessee. And I'm always pleased to have our regular panelist, Steve Schink, who is the mm -hmm. Dean of College Relations and Development at North Idaho College, and Steve will commence today's questioning. Thanks, Tony. Uh, Hugh, I wonder if you'd spend just a little bit more time with us and tell us some more about your background, because I think uh, uh, somewhere down the line in the show, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about differences between the various uh, coaching assignments you've had. So tell us about some of the schools and uh, the levels you've coached at, some of the honors you've won, and things like that. Well, as Tony alluded to a while ago, uh, uh, I started out as a graduate assistant at Lee College and was a junior varsity coach uh, and coached the JVs for one year in Cleveland. And then from there, I, I, I took a high school job. And um, I, I think all coaches, if they're going to coach and teach, should coach women. So I, I coached the uh, girls team at a high school for three years, and it was a treat. Uh, um, I, I guess girls are a little more tender-hearted than boys. Uh, they have a tendency to cry on you somewhat. But uh, uh, then I took the boys' job and was at Loudoun High School for 17 years and then went to junior college coaching at a Hiawassee Junior College in Madisonville, ten, and I was there for six years. And then I left and went to the University of Idaho for three years as, as the associate head coach to Larry Eustacey and uh, got orientated uh, to the Midwest and Northwest and um, uh, fell in love with uh, Idaho and the people of Idaho. And uh, um, then after three years at the university, we went back into the high school ranks and uh, was at Columbia, Tennessee, which is the home of the Saturn car. And it's right outside of Nashville, about 40 miles south of Nashville. And then this job came open, and we were fortunate to get back at North Idaho. And so we're, you know, we're looking forward to our tenure here in Coeur d'Alene and also being back into the good state of Idaho. Well, it's nice to have you here. Hugh, um, in that time, you won at least one national title, didn't you? We, were, we went to the nationals the six years I was at Hiawassee. Um, we went two years to the national uh, in Hutchison, and uh, also the um, the last year I was at, at Columbia. We had the number one ranked team in the state of Tennessee and finished 32 and two in the uh, final polls and uh, um, had nine players at that time uh, that were seniors and all of them went to, uh, uh, to uh, college. All of them got scholarships or was able to place them in, into a four-year institution. So, um, you know, I've been very fortunate to have good players that make great coaches. As you, um, as you look back all, over all those years of coaching at different levels in both men's and women's sports, um, what, what's the one thing that is common to all those jobs, and, and, and what, in your opinion, is the biggest difference between the coaching assignments you've had? Well, probably, you know, the, the, 
the bottom line is, you know, to win. And, and I think we have the emphasis placed wrong on that. Um, I, I've made the statements on, on several um, talk shows and, and, and what I've been speaking to groups that um, somewhere along the line, we, we've thrown our priorities out of whack. Um, you know, the bottom line is to get a degree from college. Now, don't get me wrong, I want to win. Uh, the bottom line is that you win. If you're going to put forth a lot of effort, you should also emphasize winning. I, I firmly believe that. But, you know, to get a college degree is probably the most important thing uh, as far as my, that, my concept of, of coaching. Um, I, I tell the kids there's very, very few that are going to go into the NBA and uh, are going to the CBA or some of the ranks where the big money is. Um, but the bottom line is you need your degree because it, nobody can take that away from you. And we try to emphasize that above all. And, and you know, uh, the different jobs, the bottom line is you've got to be yourself. Um, no matter what, what realm of coaching you're coaching in, whether it's junior college, division one, girls, boys, or what, you, you've got to be yourself. You cannot be someone else. Um, you cannot be a John Wooden and a Bobby Knight. You, you've got to be just yourself and, and to reflect to your team uh, your philosophies of the game, uh, what you expect out of them. And, and most important has been always been my philosophy is that, um, you know, you try to be a good person and try to do what's right because you have a lot of little eyes looking at you. And um, we, we tried to emphasize family in, in all phases of junior college, high school, whatever, in our coaching philosophy. So those are some of the things that are common to all the coaching assignments you've had. Are there any significant differences between coaching high school basketball and, and, uh, and college basketball, for instance? Well, you know, probably the biggest difference in, in uh, high school, you deal with the parents. And, uh, you know, and, and here I've, I'm a parent myself, too, and, and every parent has tunnel vision. Um, they see their kid. They see the good things on their kid and don't see the bad things, which is, is common. That's, that's only human nature. And uh, some of them have a tendency to want to emphasize their feelings to the coach. And uh, um, I, I, after 17 years in a high school rank, I, after I took the college job, I said, I'm going to recruit players where the parents can't come to see them. They're far <laughs> enough away from home. But I understand that. Like I say, I, you know, I'm a father of three, three uh, children, and all three of them participated in college, and uh, one now is, is getting ready to. But um, uh, the, the bottom line is, you know, teaching, whether teaching coaching and teaching the sports, whether it's in high school or whether it's in uh, uh, college, is the same. You know, you've got to put the basketball in the hole, and you've got to stop the other team from scoring. So. The emphasis is, uh, is upon uh, correct fundamentals and, and the teaching aspect of it is the same as high school, junior high, or whatever. Uh, Hugh, may I broaden the, the issue to all sports, uh, uh, both women and men's programs. We have a lot of discussion in society, the role of athletics, and, and particularly in the educational system, and the role of uh, academic pursuits and, and vocational technology and so forth. If you were speaking to young people and also to their parents <clears throat> with all these years experience you've had, and I know that you have interest in some other sports other than basketball, uh, what does athletics and sports contribute to society beyond the entertainment uh, of the fans? And what does it do for individuals who are participating in the process? How does it affect and change their life? Well, you, you know, in, in, in most programs, I feel like you've got to be disciplined. You've got to sacrifice uh, some of the things that you, that normal students will enjoy in their college careers, uh, that, that a basketball player or a person that's in a sports is not going to be able to do. Because most coaches have curfews and uh, they require them uh, six, six days of practice and uh, usually they practice them so hard that they don't have the time to run around and, and do some of the extracurricular activities that the other students have. So, you know, I, I think it trains them as far as, as being disciplined for a job later on in life. Um, you know, we like to emphasize as coaches 
that that that, that we build character, and uh, uh, you know, is 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 what a lot of coaches like to say. Character is usually with the kid. You can help that character, but as far as as coaches building character, uh, that's beyond my realm of of, of thoughts. I, I just don't believe that you can build character. I think you can help character. Um, but, but you know, the discipline part, uh, making sure they're on time, making sure that they work, take responsibility, I think helps a kid in his uh, later life as far as, as being associated with a sports program. I want to get your reaction to a controversial area in athletics. So much money is involved in professional sports, baseball, football, basketball, etc. And because the players, some of them have a short span, particularly in football, I've heard that averages for, if you took all the players, four or five years. So they're trying to get a max amount of money for the time they're there. And of course, some last a long time in baseball and they make huge sums of money. And from that's become, um, has developed, I should say, uh, intense competition. And there's been an increase in violence uh, of one athlete against another one or uh, uh, toward the officials. And also some people in sports, as they've gotten rather rich, have lost what well, some would say their perspective. How do you, uh, am I correct in that observation? And second, how do you deal with young people who are using those individuals as role models? Well, you know, I, I try to emphasize to my players when we have our, our first meeting um, that you have a lot of eyes watching you. And, um, you know, I, I, I I really push for my players to try to be the person off the floor as well as on the floor. And when they're on the floor, they're gonna, they're gonna act like human beings. They're not gonna put on a show. We don't like to display uh, uh, the little dances or whatever uh, uh, after a bucket or something, uh, the chest bumping, all that. Uh, you know, we leave that to someone else. And, and um, we have. Uh, I, I think we've, we have destroyed um, some of the aspects of the game because we've pampered. We've pampered a lot of the athletes. Um, of course, I can sit here and say, uh, you know, the, the, the prices are out of range for the NBA contract because I never had it offered to me. If I, you know, if it had been offered to me, I jumped at it. And I don't think there's a person that, that's saying, uh, well, they're paid too much if they had the opportunity to get that much at their job or whatever, that they wouldn't take it. So I, I don't think we can blame the kids. I think what, what I'm, I run across, especially when I was recruiting, every kid that I recruited thought they were gonna get that $40 million contract like the Shaq has. And, uh, you know, th they don't realize what the percentage is that goes on and, and plays in the NBA that can sign a contract like that. So what we've got to guard against, especially in the junior college ranks, is a kid thinking that he doesn't have to go to class. All he needs to do is participate in ball, and he doesn't have to worry about those grades, which that, that is a big concern with me as far as, as coaching these kids, especially the freshmen and sophomores, every one of them think they're going to go to the NBA, and they're not. Um, and, and, and to try to emphasize the classes. So I, I hear you saying, though, that, that that's become, with all this publicity in recent years, it's more of a challenge to you than it was when you first started coaching. I suppose you had to spend more time trying to create uh, some more reality in, in, in the individual. Yeah, you, you, you have to. And, and you know, uh, probably. And, and the people in, in, the, in the state of Idaho will probably relate to this young man. Probably one of the greatest compliments I feel that I've had as a coach was when I was at the University of Idaho. Um, we had a young man, uh, Mike Gustaville, his father's the dentist in Boise. Um, his uncle is president of one of our local banks here. Um, was a, a tremendous uh, student, he's a full point student, studying to be a doctor. And uh, we, we'd had team meetings and we talked about the emphasis on, on studying in, in comparison to the practice sessions and all this. And 
Um, the young man came to me one day. This is, I'd been for a year and a half at the university at that time, and he asked me to go with him to receive an award. And I said, I'd love to. And I thought, gosh, that, um, uh, that's great that, you know, Four Point students asked me to go receive an award, which I thought for all A's that he'd gotten. And I come to find out we were practicing at Washington State, and I was going to be able, was not going to be able to attend the meeting. So I asked my wife to fill in for me. And um, when she got there that night, she saw his grandparents and his father and mother, and all of them had a special table. And she saw the president of the university and the alumni director there. And she thought, "Gosh, this is pretty important." And um, the president got up and said, "We're glad to have all of our honor students." and also the student, uh, the, the professor that the student had selected as being the most influential in their lives while they're at the university. And my wife kept looking around. She's trying to think, wonder who Mike has selected. And then when the president got up and said representing Coach Watson, his wife, Anna Sue, and, and she cried, you know. And, and to me, you know, I've got a lot of coaching. Um, uh, you know, if you've been in this long enough, you're gonna get Coach of the Year awards. But I have that on my desk also, and that's the most important aspect, to see a young man that, you know, has placed emphasis upon other parts of the program, plus be a good, good basketball player also. So, you know, that, that's been one of the goals that, that I've tried to do with my staff and wherever I've been, is, you know, you cannot look at the NBA. You've got to look ahead because very, very few of them get a chance to go and sign a contract that will that will see them through life. Thank and, you. Uh, so we, you know, we we tried to emphasize, forget about the MBA and, and, and get your two years in and, and look for a four year school. Steve Schink. Do you wonder if you'll take just a minute and tell us about what percentage of your time you spend at, at, at the activities I'm going to name? And I'm going to call the first. It's all it's all coaching. So I'm going to call. Uh, the time you spend on the court with your with your athletes teaching how much of the, how much of your time as a coach is spent teaching your athletes how to play basketball um, teaching on the floor or are you working off the floor getting them ready to teach a any aspect of it that you think is is that part of the, of the, your responsibility well, it's, it, in, in junior college especially Steve it's a it's a 24-hour job uh, um, I can recall on one, one student called me at 2 o'clock in the morning and said, Coach, I've got a toothache. I can't sleep. And I said, well, what can I do about it? You know, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep now either. <laughs> and uh, I said, take you a couple of aspirins, go back to bed, and, and in the morning I'll take you to the dentist. But um, a, as far as the teaching, you know, we, we usually go about two and a half hours, and then we'll bring them back during the day and, and give them some emphasis on individual instruction, maybe an hour between classes or something where we can have the gym. And then, of course, once you get into the season, you break the film down and, and you'll bring them anywhere from two to three hours extra that you'll work on films, especially uh, some of the big games that uh, you really need to prepare more for. And uh, uh, we practice six days a week and we probably would practice seven, but our gym is is um, uh, rented out on Sunday. So, but we uh, uh, we put a lot of emphasis on uh, uh, practice session and individual work. So, I, I would say in a day's time we spend a good six to eight hours. A now, day now working. Tell me about recruiting. It's a 24-hour, 365. You're up to 48 day. hours a day now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you, you never you, in this recruiting business you never Stop. quit. It's just you know, you're constantly looking ahead, uh, especially in junior college, because a lot of times you'll only have them for one year, depending upon if you take a Division One player that's transferred from another school, or at the most you've got them for two years, and uh, so you're constantly trying to find, if you want to be really successful, you're trying to find the blue chip players, and uh, it's a never-ending battle. You've got to constantly uh, check in with Division One coaches, uh, Every time one comes in to visit or look at your players, you're, you're questioning him because you don't have the money to get the road like they do. So 24-hour um, day job. Uh, there's not a day go, goes by that I don't look at the recruiting uh, list or, or try to make a call to someone. 
about recruiting. And I may give you a chance to get up to 72 hours a day here, but what, what about <laughs> working with boosters and, and uh, community people and organizations, other schools, that sort of thing? Well, that, that, that's part of the job too, you know, especially in college because everybody likes to be associated with the college. And here we have a boosters meeting uh, on 12 o'clock every Tuesday and uh, um, every opportunity that I get, I go speak to the groups. And uh, I'm also uh, uh, speaking with the athletic directors and the uh, uh, high school groups next week. And, and we're gonna set up some things where some of our players can come in and speak to the uh, their clubs and also their student body and, and you know we want to try to put back into the community uh, the community supports North Idaho they support their athletic program so we want to put something back into the community give the community something back instead of taking something constantly away from them and I'll ask you one more quick question if Tony will let me what what do you think is the most important skill that you bring to the game of, of basketball and and what's the one skill, if you, and I know you're, you're always looking for that, that blue chip, well-rounded athlete that can do everything, but if you had to, had to say the, the thing that's most important to me in a player when I recruit him, what, what would you say to the, is the answer to those two questions? Of course, probably the most important thing, if he can score, ba <laughs> if he can score baskets. <laughs> but no, we, we, uh, not only do we want blue chip players, we want blue chip people. We, we don't want to bring, uh, and I promised them, when I interviewed for the job here that I wouldn't bring anybody into this school that would embarrass the state, the city, or the school. And, and we try to put an emphasis on that. Every, every talk that we have to the players, we're, we're constantly, um, we're constantly in, in, in contact with the players to find out, you know, what their problems is, if we can help them or whatever. But, uh, yeah, probably, you know, my strongest thing probably is recruiting, and uh, um, uh, I just feel like that there's no reason that uh, North Idaho cannot have the blue chip players that the other junior colleges got with the facilities that they've had. The, uh, um, the people at the resort have been just tremendous working with us, and uh, the whole, whole town of Coeur d'Alene has been great, so we're excited. We're really excited about being here and recruiting to North Idaho. We're taping this program earlier than it airs, and so by the time this airs, well, you'll be in the season, and so the people of this region at least can come and watch. From the first year you coached until now, like all fields, there's been changes uh, in strategy or, or even the, the ability of players and so forth. Would you share with our viewers, uh, and, and you may not want to confine it to basketball, but what are some of the changes in the last 20 or 25 years that are significant uh, that require one to maybe even approach coaching somewhat different? Well, you know, the coaching, and, and, and here again, I, I believe basketball coaches are the, the world's worst for stealing somebody else's ideas. I think more than football coaches, you know. I, I don't know of any coaches nowadays that can probably come up with a game plan or an offense that somebody hadn't used 20 years ago. You, you know, we like to think we invent things, but uh, um, it, the game has really changed since I started out, and we're talking about about 30 some years of coaching. Um, the game has been more up tempo. Uh, you've got better athletes. Uh, I know myself when I first the first basketball game I saw was I was in the seventh grade, and it was on an outdoor court on a dirt court, and uh, I know my two sons, uh, I, I bet neither one can tell you the first game that they saw because they can't remember. They saw them when they were, you know, yeah, the, it was like concept. They, they were seeing basketball games when they were born, you know. So, you know, that, that has changed, and, and we as coaches like to think we uh, put a, a, a lot into the players and and a lot we do depends on the W's and L's, but uh, great players make great coaches. And the better players you get, the better, better record you're gonna have. So that's, that's very important. But, um, uh, and, and again, um, I'm seeing a little bit of uh, kids aren't as dedicated as they once were. Basketball is, is not their whole life now. They've got cars that uh, normally they didn't a few years back, and 
most of them have uh, uh, have different things on their mind, and and basketball is not a way of life for some of them. But um, it has changed quite a bit, especially the, like I said earlier, the up tempo type. Maybe you're identifying something that's true to, across the general population, particularly with younger people. That the attention spans are shorter. Uh, people are. Uh, we hear a lot about young children being very hyper. Uh, I've always said, I probably shouldn't say this, Steve, being on television, but uh, television is because people have a short uh, attention span in the fact that you have a commercial every few minutes or a program ends and stuff. I hear you saying that that also could be true uh, in sports. It's harder to, to have the concentration that you need for a period of time. Right. We, we asked our players for their minds for two and a half hours in practice session. And uh, that's impossible. That's impossible. Uh, I know that. I realize that. But I keep emphasizing it. We'd like to have them for two and a half. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I think the attention span, unless it's really, really a crucial game, it's impossible to have them with you the whole time. And that, that's one of the things that a coach strives for, and he tries to. to, to uh, have his practice around, um, all of his uh, uh, talks, he tries to get it where they're constantly with you, but no, it's impossible now. Steve Sheen. If you could change one thing about the game of basketball, what would it be? If I could change one thing, I, oh gosh, I, you know, to me right now, it, 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 it's, it's a great game. Probably if I could change one thing about the game would be the cheating part. Uh, um, and it, you know it's, it's growing bigger and bigger. Uh, I think we're we're laying down uh, the wrong facts for our young people. Um, here again, uh, as I alluded to earlier, we we've got a tendency to put the emphasis on winning. That you know you can look back some of the football coaches, basketball coaches that have been fired from another school. They've gone to another school and continued to coach even though they've just cheated and, and, and got out of line um, and they've won and they've been a hero again. So that, 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 that's one that rubs me raw. You know, I, like I said, I've been in the college ranks. This is my 10th year in the college ranks. And, and I, you know, if anybody remembers anything about me, I, the thing I'd like them to remember is that he didn't have to cheat to get players. On that note, after bringing the program to conclusion, on behalf of Steve Schink and our staff, Hugh Watson, we thank you, the new men's basketball coach at North Carolina College, for being with us and talking about the theory and philosophy of sports. And we'll have you back again at some time in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you've found our program interesting, and I would like to invite you to be with us again next week at the same time when we will discuss yet another issue. Until then, please have a good week. I am Tony Stewart. The North Idaho College Public Forum was videotaped live from the studios of instructional technology on the campus of North Idaho College for viewing at this more appropriate time. We invite you to join us again next week for another all-new edition of the North Idaho College Public Forum on this public television station. <laughs>